please watch out for these changes. The Internal Revenue Service has confirmed important information regarding the distribution of inflation relief payments. You may owe the federal government more money this year. This may be true if you have recently received a state rebate check. My dear friends, I'll be going over what you need to know. So please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you need to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways. Why do Americans pay more for certain drugs and patients in other countries? To understand, we need to have a serious effort to navigate the network of perverse incentives throughout the healthcare system. <clears throat> I lived in it for 25 years. I am very kind of aware of it. Taking a substantive look at insurance benefit design, price transparency, regulatory barriers, intellectual property barriers, the perverse effect government discount programs have upon prices charged to commercial patients, etc. One example, just to say again a little bit of complexity here, the 340B drug program resulted in a $54 billion in drug discounts in 2022. But we actually don't know if those discounts lowered prices for the patient who bought the drug. There are reports that patients paid cash when the intermediary took the full price, even though 340B should have lowered it. That is a serious investigation being conducted by this side of the dais that the other side of the dais was not interested in participating in. That is an understanding of an ecosystem. I understand there's no one more eloquent than Chair Sanders on Medicare for All. And we can cherry pick examples of how other countries are doing something better. I can cherry pick the opposite. Canada is struggling, just, just to show you that there's a complexity here, let me just take an example. Canada is struggling with specialty care. In May of last year, the Canadian government began to send 4,800 Canadians from British Columbia to Washington State to, quote, ensure people have faster access to life-saving radiation treatment, end quote. They can afford their system because we're right next door. Relatedly to this hearing and to that, Alison Declizo, a Canadian woman, paid for her own treatment in the United States after the Provincial Health Authority in British Columbia denied her access to life-saving chemotherapy. Canada had a lower cost drug so low they didn't carry the chemotherapy. So she paid for it out of pocket in the United States so she could have life-saving chemotherapy. The United States is not perfect, but if we cherry pick from other countries, we have to do a more thorough investigation to see is there a balance there. Now let's return to prescriptions. Canadians pay more, less than we do. Let's figure out why. But let's also point out that public health insurance in Canada only covers 21% of newly developed drugs. Now, maybe that's a trade-off, but I can tell you, you tell an American that they can't have access to a life-saving court, a life-saving drug, they're gonna see you in court. Uh, they're gonna sue and they're gonna say, I want that access. The UK only covers 48% of newly available drugs. Americans just would not tolerate that. It's fair to say that Ms. Declouseau, or those radiation treatment patients, or those not getting the newly developed life-saving drugs as quickly, might die in those countries that don't have access to the same treatments as do we in the US. These are serious questions. One more time, I'm a doc. Uh, I am aware of this but we need to fully consider all these issues and then maybe bring you in at the end. The Internal Revenue Service has confirmed that the state rebates sent to many Minnesota residents last year will be taxed. These rebates were worth up to $1,300 in some cases and were a result of a $3 billion Minnesota tax relief bill. The bill also included a child tax credit for the state worth up to $1,750 per dependent child during a news conference about the projected Minnesota budget surplus for 2024. Governor Tim Walz expressed strong disapproval of the IRS's decision to consider the rebate checks taxable. State stimulus checks, tax rebates, and inflation relief payments are popular. But since the crisis, millions of Americans in 21 states have received special state payments 
and several states sent rebates and surplus tax refunds last year. Governor Walz sharply criticized the IRS's move to tax these rebates, while highlighting the contrasting scenario where crisis relief payments in other states remain tax-free. According to the IRS, if you receive special state payments, such as one-time refunds, rebates, or other payments in 2023, you usually will not have to include them in your income for federal tax purposes. This is relevant for those who choose to claim the standard deduction on their federal returns, which is the case for most taxpayers. Governor Walz fears the tax could add an unexpected financial burden for many residents. And at the same time, the state's budget has a projected surplus of approximately $2.4 billion through June 2025. While Minnesota won't tax the rebates, the federal tax on these rebates could reportedly range from $26 to $286 for Minnesota residents. The amount of tax will depend on household income and the total rebate amount. The initial rebates amounted to $260 per person. Eligible households potentially received up to $1,300 for couples with at least three dependents. So friends, if you reside in Minnesota and you did not receive your Minnesota rebate, there is a chance that you may have thrown it away by mistake. However, the state has reissued 150,000 Minnesota tax rebate checks that remained uncashed or have expired since they were sent last summer. A limit on state and local tax deductions could be in store for a last-minute overhaul, meaning that millions of Americans may receive fatter tax refunds this year. The so-called SALT deduction cap, which is poised to sunset in 2026, limited the amount of state and local taxes that Americans can deduct from their federal taxes to $10,000 as part of the former president's signature tax law. But a new proposal would raise a cap to $20,000 for married couples who file their taxes jointly and make up to half a million dollars. The break would only apply to the 2023 tax year and then would revert to the previous $10,000 limit until it expires in two years. Before Republicans capped the SALT deduction as part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017, taxpayers were able to freely deduct their state and local taxes from their federal taxes, helping them offset some of their liability. But there are a growing number of lawmakers who say the cap hurts middle-class homeowners living in regions with steep property taxes. They also have criticized the limit as a marriage penalty because the limit is the same for single and joint filers. House lawmakers are currently considering the bill, which is dubbed the Salt Marriage Penalty Elimination Tax, and are expected to vote on it sometime this week. If it does pass, the bill would then head to the Democratic-controlled Senate. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.